Welcome back. Um, we're on lab five, um, which uh, don't mind the uh, lab six label here. I've decided to reorder some things at the last second, so I'm going to have to update that. Um, also, I miscounted. I thought there were eight labs uh, in the class. There's only six. So we only have two to go, including this one. Uh, so this one involves uh, looking at volatile evidence. It takes place circa 2012. Act B Unlimited calls M13 investigations again. This time they want you to investigate a potential corporate espionage case. They believe that they have been targeted by a malware attack. Their automated antivirus system flagged a computer as being infected and they believe the infection was cleaned. However, that's a note for self there to pick up that typo. However, they would like assistance in determining the source of the infection and determining what may have happened while the machine was under the influence of this malware. Uh, once again, I will not be filling out a forensic report in this video, but you must turn one in. All right, you are being graded on the report. We do have questions. I am, as in the last video, going to answer the questions along with you and show you how I found them. Um, I likely... I'm toying with the idea of not even doing a video for, for the final lab, and just, uh, well, I'll probably do a video, but I won't do a report or ask uh, or answer the questions, but I will probably at least show you how to do the lab. Uh, we'll see. It'll be a different kind of video than the ones I've been recording here. But in this one, I'm doing the questions. You will do the report and the questions, okay? So I've already got the questions up here. Posted. Let me uh, fix this up a little bit here so we know what we're looking at. And we have been provided several things for this scenario. We have a PCAP file, we have a timeline file, and we have an IMG file. To open the timeline file, Lab 6 timeline is just uh, a text editor. This is an export from a forensic tool that has exported the timeline. Uh, this shows the uh, Mac B time and path and permissions. Uh, the timeline file is essentially a, uh, a running digest of events on the machine. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, for the PCAP file, we will be using Network Miner. I prefer Network Miner for network forensic stuff. You can use Wireshark or whatever. I just prefer Network Miner for this kind of work. And for the IMG file, we have Volatility Workbench. And in order to open this, you'll have to browse to the file, come down here and select any file because an IMG file is not a default type for uh, Workbench, Volatility Workbench. Uh, bin, raw, uh, dump, and mem are what they're generally looking for. The IMG file is a valid file and it can be read. You'll just have to navigate to it to uh, open it up. Then click Refresh Process List. Windows should be set there by default. And when you see the processes that are running on the machine as such, you know that uh, you have got everything as it should go. Right, so this is a sign that things are working. <clears throat> All right. Uh, also, note to self, add in the scenario that the user recalls uh, receiving a PDF file via an email and opening it up before it was infected. That was the last thing that I remember doing before the AV triggered. So... Um, the reason that we need to know that is because if we check out our process list, that gives us where, where we start. So lab five, uh, sorry, lab, yes, lab five, question one, how was the attack delivered? Give the file name of the infected file. Look at the PCAP to find this. Okay. So <clears throat> we will know from the scenario document, the user reported receiving a PDF and opening it prior to the alert. So we know if we look in the PCAP, so we go to Network Miner, looking for files. Um, we don't have a uh, PDF here. We have a text file and we have a swingmechanicsdoc.exe. Um, checking out the details here. Program cannot be run in MS-DOS mode. Check this out. 
says it's a text file. It's actually a RAR. So we have an archive here. And this is a FTP uh, source destination. So our Windows machine, uh, 172.16.150. Let's go to Volatility Workbench, and let's check. It, this is a new version of uh, Volatility Workbench, by the way, so I'm. Uh, um, they changed the command list, so give me a couple seconds here while I struggle a little bit to figure out where everything ought to be. Uh, the last version that I used is uh, 2 something or other. This is version 3, and there's a, a slight UI change here between the two. Um, they used to have them organized in different lists by um, essentially why you would be running the commands, but now it's just one big list, and also many are missing. You can tell already some are missing. Uh, shit. Okay, well, I kind of thought this might be a problem, so I actually downloaded the previous version. So I'm going to extract that, and we're going to use a different version of Volatility Workbench. Oh, at least I am. I'm going to use a version I'm more familiar with. Um, I recommend you do the same in order to follow along with the video, but if you want to try using the new version, go ahead, you'd be my guest. All right, browse to that image. We're looking for any file. Lab six image open profile. Uh, I think that this is a 2003 service pack two 32 bit. Let's try it. If you pick the wrong profile, you'll get an error. Just Keep trying until you get the right one. The new version of Volatility Workbench is meant to make this process a little bit easier because you could just select an OS and it will attempt to ascertain what version it is, whereas with this older version, you have to specify. Um, but again, I'm more familiar with this version, so I'm willing to do a little bit of extra work here to identify the correct service back or the correct version um, to find what we're looking for here. Uh, Windows XP Service Pack 3 x86 is what it says. Windows XP, which service pack was it? Uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2, 32 bits. Okay, and um, this <clears throat> come on. Come on, let's go. All right, well, while this is doing its thing, uh, let's, uh, we have a couple of files here we can see in the PCAP. One TXC and swing mechanics doc. 
uh, .exe. So let's follow those threads while we're waiting. Uh, let's go swing mechanics. <clears throat> There's the file. This will be the first instance of it. We have a prefetch file, and a prefetch file, of course, the .pf file uh, is when um, Internet Explorer, uh, well, when any browser, but in this case, PF, uh, Internet Explorer, downloads a file. It doesn't come in one big chunk. It comes in several different chunks that are reassembled on the download side. Uh, and then uh, those are prefetch files. And then when the um, end of file is sent and all of the pieces have been obtained, the file system will reassemble those prefetch files into the file that was intended to be downloaded. And then there you go, you have a copy on your workstation. So this is a prefetch file here. Uh, we can see uh, Mac B is, the, everything is there, M-A-C-B. So this is the first instance of it because this is when it is created. That's the B, modified, accessed, and changed. Oh, sorry, modified, accessed. Modified, accessed, and yeah, right. There we go. There's our process list. So now we can see uh, this is what was running on the machine when it was taken. Uh, let's look at networking, uh, connections. Uh, we can run and get our output off of that. <clears throat> and we're doing this so that I can get the IP. I just want to verify in the image that the IP matches because from what I'm seeing here, I'm concerned that I may have gotten my Kapora mixed up and um, we don't have the same machine <clears throat> okay yeah we do all right we're good so uh 172.16.15020 is our machine uh, we do have an ip here that doesn't appear in the pcap this is a connection on 443 so https to a remote server um we can see um this is associated with process id 1096 and if we go to our process list process id 1096 uh, right here was an explorer window uh, that uh, that spawned that web request, which is already a little strange. Uh, but the parent process ID of explorer right there is 1212. And if we look in the list, that's our user init. And if we follow that back, 624, uh, win logon. And so those are our subsystem processes that we're getting to here. Um, so somebody opened something in explorer which uh, caused a connection out uh, over HTTPS to a remote server. Uh, we also, this, this right here is uh, from uh, ID4, which is down here, that system. This is a, a connection to whatever 172.16.15.010 is, and it's Windows, so it's probably uh, VMware. So it would, you know, it would be an analog for something like a domain controller or, or something like that. Okay, um, so they said they received a PDF. Here we have uh, Adobe ARM right there. Uh, that is uh, 1796, parent process is 1096. Uh, right here is reader. Uh, 1096, however, is no longer in the list. There is no 1096. So whatever process spawned Adobe reader, we don't have in the list any longer. So whatever it was, was closed. Could have been a browser, could have been a mail client. We don't know, but it, there is a PDF here. Something was opened. Um, all right. So, um, oh, you know what? Now I, now that I'm thinking of it, I'm not getting my Kapora mixed up. I'm getting my scenarios mixed up. This was not a, this was not a PDF that the user received. That is banking troubles. That's a different scenario. So then the lab scenario here is correct. It shouldn't say anything about it. It's just that there was a malware attack. All right, so then we can see in Volatility Workbench uh, that 1096, whatever that process was, uh, opened up a PDF and, as we see here, command.exe, right? And it made a connection out to this IP address uh, over 443. And then in the PCAP file, we can see uh, with the timestamps that that would be swingmechanics.exe. So how was the attack uh, delivered? Uh, we got to get rid of this because that's not actually um, not actually what we're looking for. Uh, user opened a link or file on EID 1096. 
96, which launched the PDF reader, so it was a PDF, uh, and man.exe, a connection to an unknown server was made. The file was swing mechanics doc dot exe. Okay. We got that one. What is roughly the size in bytes or megabytes of the malware? If you can find the exact size, but if you carve the file, do not try to execute it. Okay. <clears throat> well, this has uh, swing mechanics at exe as being 8,192 bytes. We can actually confirm that with this uh, as we were already, uh, already had this open. Here's our 8,000, uh, 192 bytes right here, but we can see that the actual size of the malware is this. So this is the total amount that was transmitted, but the malware itself is uh, 5,248. Uh, what time did the attack convert, uh, con uh, uh, attack occur? Um, all right. Well, here we have the time, um, right here. This is one date we have. So let's take this and see how it compares to our other evidence sources. Um, in the PCAP, this was this time here. So uh, that's not exact, but that's uh, that's okay. Wait, that's the last right time. Why is the last right time different? Um. All right. Well, this says. Oh, that's UTC. That's UTC. Okay, that explains why. Um, so we have some discrepancy here. Um, let's check volatility workbench. This timestamp is here again. This is UTC. And that was, nope. God damn it. That's um Friday, April. Uh this is UTC, so minus six. What time zone are we in here? Doesn't specify. So we'll have to convert epoch to Gregorian date, but I don't uh, think that that's necessary. I think the tools that we have here are doing it for us. Um, so 27 and then um, doesn't really add up. That's when the image was taken, I think. So this would have been way after the attack occurred. This is just what we have right now. So uh, we can say the time occurred, so the attack occurred, um, C, S, T, Friday, April 27th, uh, we'll say uh, 2100 to 2200. We'll go with that. What is the IP address where the malware originated and what is the IP address of the CNC server? Uh, this came from this host here. I'll show you what I'm doing. Here's our source. Okay. And um, that also dropped a secondary infection 
a little while later, uh, about 13 minutes or so later. Um, but the CNC server you can see in here is what we're looking for. God damn it. Ah. Don't you one for one nine ninety seven thirty two? All right, uh, process uh, ten ninety six. Uh, so we can suffice to say is uh, likely going to be our swing mechanics dot exe or, or whatever it was called after after that. So let's uh, run a malfind on this while we're looking at the next question. Where does the malware go once it has infected the system? Check the timeline file. Okay, so let's bring that back up and trace it. So here is uh, swingmechanics.exe or dot doc dot exe. Uh, we have some pictures in addition to that that are also created around the same time. So we are on an, on a website here. Uh, there is Adobe Reader opening. You know, uh, I just realized that it grabbed the wrong time anyway. Uh, I think for this question, I think we can pretty much narrow this down. Uh, we have the timeline file. Um, so I'm going to say, obviously, this is uh, pretty conclusive here. 2159. All right, so... Um, Let's see what we can do here. So it opens up Reader. Box files, it downloads. Search for one TXT. Okay, there's one, uh, that's segment one. Uh, let's see, report from Malfind here. <clears throat> Shit, that's let out, but... Uh, that's too much output. I'm not going through all that. Uh, let's run a command scan here. Get that command history, because we do see that uh, command is running when the uh, memory scrape is done. So One TXT is coming up. There's too many instances. Let's try the RAR. No, it's never renamed. Um, yeah, here we go. Out, 1TXT. Uh, Z, net use, DC1 response, dir, MDD, mem dump. Okay, this is the acquisition of the memory dump file. Um, output there, that's that suspect server. Um, Artifacts of the scenario creation, it seems, but there is exfiltration here. So. Ugh, were the confidential files compromised? Yes, there seems to have been exfiltration uh, using... Um, and on exe to input data and send to remote server. Um, where does the malware go once it infects the system? Uh, let's see. 
reader opens. Uh, let's get back to where we were. All right. There's reader. So much stuff happening here on the system right now. Uh, there's the mem dump being created, end of the scenario. All right, we do know the size of the malware. Uh, it was 52.48, so let's search instead of like this, let's search for that size and see if we can find uh, other files with that size that would tell us if there was copies made. It's just incidental that that, si that uh, sequence of numbers is coming up here, but we'll get to it in just a second. We're getting towards the bottom, which is where we saw swing mechanics. Uh, there are swing mechanics. Oh, okay, maybe it does want uh, the whole whole size, which was uh, 8192. That's not it. That's a DLL. It's incidental. DLL, DLL, DLL. Doodle, doodle, Again, I'm probably getting my scenarios confused here. It's there's so many of them that I've gone through. Oh, it's services hosts. Yes. Oh, I see what happened. Um, so we can see directly after this prefetch file is done, we have a modified and born for services host. Services host ought to already exist, obviously. Um, there should not be a B time for this. So, um, what does the mayor will go once it's infected the system? Uh, over, um, replaces service hosts.exe in system 32. What process is the backdoor running in? Uh, the backdoor is running in, if we go back up to our process list, which is going to be kind of a hike now, but just a sec. All right, so this is uh, generated by PID 1096. 1096 is no longer in the list, but we can see that 1096 was launched here, uh, launched several processes here. Um, so it would be process uh, 2008 reader. Slash one of these. Did the backstore install any more uh, malware? Check the timeline and uh, mem dump. So um, the timeline here. Uh, let's see what do we have. Um. Now that we know that this is infected. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, here's another pre-patch file right here. So downloading services host. Here's uh, that magic number here, 8192. Uh, so this should be 8192. It is the full size that we see in the uh, cap file. Um, well, what else does it do though? We know that it downloads, or um, this is the exfiltration from our host to the destination. We know that. Um, but what else gets replaced? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, here we have uh, another prefetch file here for services host. Uh, we also have a prefetch file here for an infected version of Adobe ARM. Um, Prefetch for Explorer, user init. So uh, this is our infected process. We can see that now. Um, uh, yes, infected versions of many system files are grabbed. Explorer.exe, user init.exe, uh, Adobe ARM.exe. Uh, reader SL. Oh, actually, I guess it could be either. So we can come back up here, slash PID 2008 reader underscore SL. They're both infected. Um, Uncle Sid. Um, man, net MDD. And any others? Uh, and then MDD is run. Memdump is created. And uh, exfiltration occurs. Uh, which of these are most likely copies of the original backdoor placed on the machine as insurance? So for that, what we need to do is look for that magic number. So here's MDD. We can see that that's not the right size. That's not the right size. That's not the right size. Um, that's not the right size. So this is different code that's being downloaded. Uh, we're looking for exact copies. Uh, 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 looking for all them prefetch files. Let's go back up to here. Let's search for that file size. Hold on, we got more. We got more we missed. Uh, there's also a bunch here. P, R, let's go back up. Um, also several other files. E.exe, R.exe, W, these are all being saved in System32. Um, reader updater. Holy moly. All right, let's go farther up now. Oh, IP config, ping. We already have net I explore. Uh, 
Just a whole slew of infected files. Okay, let's go back up a little bit more here so we can search from up here. Uh, nope, forward direction, please. All right. Um, registry, 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 registry. Registry. Backward. Forward. Sam log, Sam log. Um, Sysmon. So this is after infection. Okay, so here we go. There's our initial malware. These are DLLs, which may be related, but are probably incidental. LPR. Uh, well, this is born. LPQ and LPR. It's both born at this time. Let's do match whole word here because I keep I keep getting partial words. Oh shit, we're all the way here at the fucking top of the document here. We're way off in the irrelevant land. Services host, Sysmon. Hmm. Well, from what I'm seeing, we've gone through it a couple of times. Um, from what I've seen going through it a couple of times, it looks to me like the original backdoor is services hosts. I don't see... Um, Okay, we already got that one. What is the username and password to the FTP server? So we can go back to Network Miner here. Uh, we see that the server was 6623, sorry, 321138. Uh, we go to credentials. We can see that there were credentials used to log into this. Jack, too awesome. Awesome. Uh, can you locate any passwords for the archive, backdoor, etc.? Uh, certainly we could. Let's see what we got out of our command uh, scrape again. Um, net uz dir mdd o memdump dot bin copy cd tp copy something. All right, we don't have everything there. So let's see what else we got. Uh, let's try file scan.
Okay, come on. So just to summarize what we have so far, it looks like the user opened up a file, which was swingmechanics.doc.exe, probably thinking it was a doc file. It was an exe file, which started process ID 1096. 1096 downloaded a bunch of other files, uh, replaced some system files and a couple of others that were sitting here. Uh, and I also forgot to put... Wait, this is w not e. Um, so a slew of uh, files on here. So we do have a root kit. It replaced a bunch of system files. Um, then launched uh, Adobe Reader and uh, Reader SL in order to sit there and act as a backdoor. Uh, kept services host running as a, uh, a copy of the original backdoor as insurance. So services host is not running and they can connect to it. They don't have to have swing mechanics running anymore. Uh, they then used uh, some of uh, these MDD and infected copy of MDD uh, then to exfiltrate so that MDD we know is not probably a copy of the malware. It's probably an FTP client. Uh, the question is, is what exactly did they take? And that's what we're, we're seeking right now. They connected to an exfiltration server um, with Jack to Awesome um, and Adobe ARM and so on are communicating with the uh, command and control server over here uh, and so on. Uh, that's done. There we go. Let's see what we got. We are looking for the destiny of uh, oh passwords right. um, so of course we have um, this one we found but we already answered this one <clears throat> so that's not what we're looking for here but we'll include it there for the sake of completeness I think what we're going to do uh, I think what we're going to do is we are going to run another utility on this. See if I have it available. I do not. Okay, fine. Um... Yes, three sixty one, sixty one. And I'm going to need strings. Strings is a utility that's going to search through. This is a sys internals suite tool. And what it can do is it can search through blobs of data looking for contiguous ASCII characters. Um, to provide as output. So essentially, wherever it finds n number of contiguous ASCII characters, it will output it to a file for us. Okay. So we're going to do strings on lab six image, and it will be an ASCII only search uh, for uh, an N of, let's say, seven. And let's output that to strings.txt. No matching files were found. Oh, the, the file was last. Syntax is important. All right, and this is going to take a little bit of time to run because it is, it's not a, it's not a big memory scrape, but it's not tiny either. And it's done, so let's go to strings.txt, and let's open that up with notepad. And so now you can see uh, at least seven contiguous printable ASCII characters in a row puts it into this for us. Uh, 
this uh, file. And this is kind of a chore sometimes to go through, but with the uh, the way that uh, volatile memory is, sometimes it can be worth doing to find things, because with uh, volatility workbench, you have to know the right command, and even then you're counting on volatility workbench to parse it correctly. Um, so it's not necessarily a safe bet. We have lots of lines here to go through, though. Luckily, we can narrow this down a little bit because we do know a couple of strings we can search for. Let's see if string mechanics is in there. Uh, no. Okay, then how about w.exe? No. How about r.exe? No. Um, how about, uh, service hosts? Okay, there's that. Uh, here we have com spec equals, okay, so command.exe running. Looking for anything that might be nearby for us. And if I don't get anything off of this one, then I would uh, run it again, but reduce... Oh, there's our computer name. Um, I would reduce our um, search from seven contiguous characters to maybe four. Let's see if we get another hit. Nope. Well, we know from our command scan output in um, in um, Volatility Workbench uh, that they accessed the Z drive. Let's see if we get that. These look coincidental to me. Z dummy. Placeholder values. I'm up at the top of the document, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be an order to this. But, uh, oh. Uh, mdd.exe. This program can be run in image sauce mode. Wait, hold on, go forward. No, no, it's not what I was looking for. Get off the whole world, the whole word only. Oh, okay. Um, here we go. Binge HTTP, there's our server. Tigers, Brandon Ng Diagnostics, Swing Mechanics. So now we have the actual URL uh, that was visited. No, not paste. Z. Let's see. Um, the user visited there. There, now we have the URL of the actual malware itself. Um, there. Those are those JPEGs we saw in the um, timeline. We weren't sure where those were from. There's the memory dump, physical memory dump utility. We have that now. Shockwave flash. All right, search for some of the other malware we saw. I don't think these are related. I think those are related. We'll draw. OK, 
Okay. Now that we've got natural word off, let's try this again. There's too much noise here on this one, I reckon. Let's uh let's see what some of those other commands that were run were. This is the <sighs> so noisy. Um let's try searching just for the IP address and see where that comes up. Nope. But it's fine because it's also in the string. All right, there's our password to awesome CD home jack. Um, disconnect. So there's that txt file, which is actually a RAR, which means the RAR existed before these commands were entered. And if we're lucky, Program can I be run in MS-DOS mode? I'm hoping to see the creation of the RAR. But this is looking a little bit like garbage right here. I'm going to rerun strings, uh, and this time I'm going to run it with four contiguous instead of seven. No, I don't want to use regular notepad for this. Thank you. Can I get this back in notepad plus plus? Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep. You go ahead and crash. But I should save this first, just in case. All right. All right, there is our, as we saw before, um, exfiltration. I'm hoping with four instead of seven contiguous characters that we'll have more to see here. All of this junk right here is probably encrypted data from the encryption process which means we might be able to excise it. And not that we need to, Network Miner's already excised it for us. But if I can see the command, and we can get perhaps the password and confirm. ResLab, that's our network. We know that we're ResLab01. This is the problem when you when you reduce the contiguous characters, you get more noise. Um, searching for the Z drive is just too noisy. What were some of the other files we had? Was it P, P and R? All right, let's do a whole word on those because I don't think we searched for them that way. Okay, there's p.exe. Windows shell. Gonna be running MS DOS mode. All right. Well, we know from Network Miner, there's another way we can go about this. We know from Network Miner that it was a RAR file. RAR files could be created by several different programs. Of course, WinRAR is one of them. How about uh, R.exe? That was one of them, right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like that's very promising. Getting a lot of, uh, this is going to come up in a lot of places. Oops, no, it was easy. It's going to be too noisy. 
uh, it would take too much time. I mean, and you know, we can be as thorough as we want to be. And if this were an actual investigation, I would literally spend hours just combing through this by eye if necessary. Um, but I don't want to sit here and have everybody staring at that while I'm just you know, trying to work through it. So there's another way we can go about this. Uh, WinRAR syntax. If I look up the documentation for WinRAR, I can look for some strings that I may be able to search for. So WinRAR command switch something something. Um, we know that this was 1.txt, so actually let's just search for 1.txt and see what we get back, huh? Uh, we're going to want to match the whole word on this one. Nope, not in there. Um, okay. Um, how about we search, well, let's not search the whole word. Start with txt. And uh, it says the last parameter for WinRAR. It's WinRAR command. Here, let me show you. WinRAR command switch file and path to extract. So now I'm going to search for txt, and we know that the path was z. Nope, got nothing there. <clears throat> um, let's get rid of the dot. Nothing there. Um, well, we saw when we searched the 66 dot whatever, uh, what the hell was it? 663219. Um, we saw when we searched for this before. Uh, there's the 2215417.9 address. One five zero dot eight. Could be host file changes. I'm not sure. Or was it when we searched for swing mechanics? Might have been that. Oh, we got the original email here. Brandon. I have been studying you swing for the last few weeks. I believe I have come up with a major breakthrough in your mechanics. If these adjustments are made, I believe you will be back up in the bigs and batting above it. Okay, so this is our email. Uh, came from Lloyd McClendon. Lloyd McClendon supposedly sent him this, and there was a URL embedded in there. We don't have any email header information that I can see. Let's see if we can find it. Looking for the original email address. Um... No, I don't see it above. And I don't see it below.
Oh, where was it when we where was it we found that? Was it when we searched for MDD? I know we saw it. Uh, anyway, let's... Um... That's what it was we saw. It was an asterisk text. That's how we saw it in the command output. Yeah, there it is. File open Jack too awesome. There we go. We found it again. Um, disconnect. All right. So then. Back up pictures. All right. All right, what is the switch then for um, with WinRAR if we wanted a password protect? Show on command line modes. Archive files in shell mode. Uh, sorry, command line mode. This is where I was. Uh, dash P, set a password. So let's try searching for that. Um, dash P. Let's match the whole word on our first search. It's a very small search string. It'd be nice if I had WinGrep available and then we could search for like because I, I searched for w.exe and, and we didn't really come up with anything and p and r.exe but I mean we don't have to have the .exe if we're running from the command line right if we're in that directory we can just run it without the uh, um, file extension but I can't just search for the letter w or the letter p or r and expect to really find anything I suppose I could do combinations of those letters and this now. Uh, w R P dash minus P. Yeah, no. Um, what else do we have? Um, what else do we have here for the syntax? Um, And switch archive. Okay, uh, let's try dash p uh, asterisk dot txt. No. Okay. One dot txt. Okay. Um, Dash p one dot rar about just one dot rar.
What was even the question anymore? Oh, that's right, we're looking for passwords. Yeah, we know that there was an archive. We can actually take this here and uh, try to open the file. So it is a RAR file. We could try and crack it. Because it's encrypted. Uh, open folder. All right, there's that. Open with... Choose another app. 7 zip file manager. Yep, it's encrypted. So there is a there is a password on it. I just gotta find it. Uh, oh right, we did a file scan. That's what this was. Um reverse physical memory sample to a WinDB crash. No, that's okay. Master boot record parser, XD box info, raw to dump, mission info, print key, no. User assist, no. Ten ninety six. That's eleven twenty. No, that's running. We'll keep searching. No such option with that PID. Okay, ten ninety six then. Okay, which Right, console output then. Dump the console buffer. <sighs> okay. Um, all right, there's our output from MDD mem dump. Dir copy m k okay, we got that uh mem dump image okay that's all you can give me Mm. Let's try this password that we had. Where did that archive go? Did it crash? Too awesome. No, that's not it.
The only commands in the command buffer are for MDD. CD, MDD, O dump, O mem dump, image. Rivs. Nope. That's its handles, no. Let's go back to the timeline. Um, And out of so dump. All right, we're going to run strings another time. So I'm, I'm going to be even more permissive, and we're going to go with a minimum of... Shit, let's just do one. Just one ASCII character. It's going to be a mess. But at this point, I'm concerned that I'm filtering something out that... Uh, um, because, because my file names for some of the malware, the suspected malware, is one letter... And our file name is one letter. I'm concerned that I'm missing something. Okay, this is a lot more information to go through, but I am just trying to be thorough here. Because this 1.txt was created on our victim machine. It was exfiltrated out. So if uh, the archive was created from the command line, which it looks like it should have been, um, I mean, it's possible that it wasn't, but it should have been. It should be in here somewhere. to search through but it's to be expected um and while that's searching, let me do a file scan. Uh, not what we wanted, no. Uh, and let's, what was the file size on that? 
Let's try to narrow down our output from the uh, file scan, eh? Um, what? Oh, I see. It's changed the font of the output. Now everything is weirdly formatted. So, uh, all right. Can't find anything with that length then. Okay. Um, Just look at the output from before. Okay. Nope, don't have anything yet. Nope. Match the whole wor word. Match the whole world. File scan is not going to help us. Nope, there's nothing. Okay. Um, p.exe available columns okay let's try a dash p don't see anything adjacent to that that looks correct no 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 No. Mm. Okay. Let's run that more. And what do we do? Let's see. Might have to close and reopen this because this output is, yeah, I'm going to do that. Getting a call. Just a sec. Okay. I'm kind of at a loss here. Yeah. I know that the the scrape should contain. Um. Well, so first of all, the the console was cleared. Uh, the only thing that we see are related, it looks like, to the memory collection process. So after exfiltration or somewhere or thereabouts, um, the console was wiped. We don't have access to those, but they should still reside somewhere here in the uncontiguous memory space. I just can't seem to locate them. Um, and at this point, I'm searching for so much, through so, th through so many strings, searches are just taking too long of a time, so... Um, OK, 
can I do a string search in volatility or do I have to um hash info shell bags user assist shell bags And I think that we have gone too far. We've gone too far in the wrong direction here with our strings. So we are going to move it back to where we had it before. And we're going to do a, well, even four. Took a long time to search, but that's okay. All right. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. Found the first occurrence that's from the bottom. We're searching backwards, and we have been for some reason. All right. Um, so, reader nine. Post name. Trick of the eye. Trick of the eye. Why can't we see any of the other malware in here? We have three conspicuously named things. And none of them appear in here as they should. This is part of the problem with using strings. I wish I had. I, do I have wind grip? No. Damn it. I'd go get it. Um, okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, there is. One more thing that we can try here. Um, so, paths will appear here as well. And we know since it's a rootkit that there was a privilege escalation or the end user uh, had excessive privileges. We can search for other useful strings like administrator and see if that appears. I misspelled it. I was going to say, I know it appears at least in some of the paths. I just saw them. Uh, where administrator access falls.
I hope when you see paths, the administrator account path here, for example. Um, but that is not necessarily what I'm looking for. But yeah, something like this. I'm looking to see if paths were uh, entered or visited. One. And I know about where in the in in this list of strings to find it because I just saw, um, or uh, uh, earlier we saw rather, um, where the um exfiltration occurred. We're not quite there yet. I'm going to pop up here, search backwards. Okay, there's our mem dump. MDD, Mantech Physical Memory Dump Utility. Process must be run with administrative privileges. So now we're finally getting to the part where there may be relevant information. Maybe. Company A. Um. Sys internals. These license terms. Um, what application is this that this is coming from here? It's painful. <sighs> All right. Um, Tired of banging my head against the wall. I'm going to get wind grip and we're just going to search. Um, maybe my problem is. Maybe I should just run it with default params and see what comes out. While I get wind grip.
Oh, well, there's something new. We finally have the prefetch file for this. Windows prefetch W. Jesus. Couldn't even get that to. We didn't even see that in the other the other times I ran it with the Rams. So all right, the memory is not necessarily contiguous. So let's go and find another just a prefetch file again. And again, again. Okay, FTK. Uh, there's gf.txt. All right. This is 32w.exe, g.exe. Do we have that one on our list? No. Okay. All right, that's the save file. There it is w.exe s administrator company a okay this this isn't the xfil but this is this is them running it gee this it was not uh that was not easy main.exe copy z okay this is the tail end of the exfiltration. That's what we're seeing. This is a uh, W I'm guessing is an FTP client. This is the uh, user connect string here. Or is it so? But if we can see w.exe now, now can we see one.txt? Can we see where that was created? It's going to be harder to find because 32 bit. But it should still be NTFS. Ah, it should still be NTFS, so that shouldn't be a problem. But Um, what was that syntax again? Path. So it should be one dot txt, and then was it z? Now I'm starting to get all turned around here. And I got wind grep just in time for this to actually be useful. So. Uh, when there are
R.exe. R. Stop. Here's the reader update. These are all the prefetch files we saw before. Um, let's see what commands we have here. A. So whatever it is, we're probably looking for A. Dash P. Let's try that. A dash P. Let's try r.exe first. No, okay, let's try p g w didn't look like it was right, so okay. Uh, then without the exe, r a p e a p, you don't match the whole fucking word then. You nope. Okay. No, I don't think that's right. Let's go back to the command.exe, see what else we can find. I think we were better off searching for WinRAR. I know all.
Oh, shit. We've been sitting here looking for dash P. And now I see that there's this. Dash P is just to set a password. I wonder if that's the trick right there. Certainly it makes it easier to search for, so... There should be fewer instances of it. Should be. Three characters instead of two. Or not. I noticed this when we were looking at the uh, WEXE being run. I noticed there was an OEXES. Let me go back to this. But now I'm wondering if that is another. Um... Shit. There it is. 1.txt. Why didn't this come up when we were searching for it before? There's 1 and 2 EXE. That was in our list. There's out right there. Net exe out. It was in here the whole time. Why couldn't? Why didn't it come up? We were searching for one txt before because we saw it up here in our command line output. There was just too much noise, and we passed right by it. Uh, right. Uh, where did it go? I swear it was in here. Whatever, it's lost in the, lost in all the shit, but we were definitely searching for it, so I don't know why it didn't come up. Here we have command.exe, here's z colon. Uh, well, whatever, whatever, whatever. So it turns out, I could have saved myself so much time if the search had worked uh but it didn't but here we can see oexe uh a which we know from our syntax is the command from uh winrar for looking uh, for creating an archive hp we're missing a space that's why it didn't come up in that search because we were searching for hp match whole word only uh, the password got mashed into it. Qwerty. Qwerty. But I don't know why 1.txt didn't come up. It hit, hit it fine now, so... Alright, now we can go back over here and we can try opening this up. Uh, it's not There we go, and there's our confidential information. Okay, there's nothing to see. All right, that uh, took way longer than it needed to be. Could have shaved 45 minutes off this at least, but uh, that is the report.
or the answer to the questions anyway. Do complete an actual report. Answer these questions, follow along with me. I'll probably do it a little bit faster than I did. Um, there is one more lab to do, and I'm still thinking about what information I actually want to provide you. I don't want to leave you completely in the dark because the labs are meant to be done as a way for you to learn. Um, but I also want to give you less information as we go so that you rely more on your own skills instead of just copying what I'm doing as we go. And this is the last lab. So um, there will be at least one more video where I'll do the introduction and everything so that you, you know what is expected of you and how to get started. So see you when we get there. Take care.